Formerly a Walled for Kit Guru, AMD has launched four new Zen processors. They're all second gen parts, so the part numbers all begin with a two. Logically enough, the first generation last year started with a one. So we have the Ryzen 7 2700X, we've reviewed that elsewhere, the Ryzen 7 2700 without an X. This is the Ryzen 5 2600X, and there's also a Ryzen 5 2600. Let's just run Cinebench so you can see what it actually does. Six cores, 12 threads, all pounding away, all doing good stuff. It'll tear through that in no time. And now the CPU cooler over there is spinning up in response. We'll come to that in a little while. So it's been a year since the original Zen's launched. Uh, Ryzen's been very successful. After Ryzen 7 came out, we've got 5 and 3. Now we've got some updates. We've already had Raven Ridge with integrated Vega graphics. The family's getting quite extensive. But uh, these new parts will replace the originals. So the Ryzen 7 2700X is going to replace the 1700X. There is not a 2800X at the moment, so that's the top-notch part. And this Ryzen 5 2600X is going to replace the original 1600X, which was a 6-core, 12-thread processor that we liked a great deal. This is actually a touch cheaper than the uh, 1600X started off. When the 1600X launched, it was £250. This is 210 in the UK. That's the uh, list price at any rate. And you get that CPU cooler there, the Wraith Spire, as part of the package. That's why the box is so large. Uh, so if we say that cooler's worth some money, let's say it's £10 and a penny, then that means that this CPU is actually under £200, which is pretty good. Um, you're, you're looking at potentially a lot of hardware for your cash. Now, the move from first gen Ryzen to second gen Ryzen is a die shrink. 14 nanometer goes to 12 nanometer, which in and of itself is not very exciting. You're, you're thinking a little bit more efficiency, a little bit more clock speed. That's probably about your lot. There are actually a few other things going on happily. Otherwise, this would be a terribly short review. Glancing down the specification of the new CPU throws up no surprises. So six cores, 12 threads, base clock 3.60 gigahertz, boost clock 4.2 gigahertz, take both those speeds of the pinch of salt. Three megabytes of L2 cache, that's because it's a six core. If it was an eight core, it'd be four megabytes. Uh, 16 megabytes of L3 cache, add those two together, you get 19 meg. So you'll see some Ryzen's have 19 meg and others have 20. Uh, the 12 nanometer FinFET process, which realistically is the change inside. Uh, Precision Boost 2, Extended Frequency Range 2, that's XFR2. Uh, you get the Wraith Spire uh, CPU cooler. It uh, supports DDR4 memory uh, that's faster than previous. But there's supported and there's what works. The uh, Sniper X from g I'll run through the spec in a moment, is 3400. With previous Ryzen's, it was uh, 3200 megahertz memory is as fast as it made any sense to go. Otherwise, the system would get almost certainly unstable. And we had to use Flare X in the past from G-Skill uh, because that was a dedicated Ryzen and Threadripper memory. And now suddenly we're able to use a uh, more general purpose DDR4, which is actually really encouraging. It suggests that the wrinkles of Ryzen, is that a rhyme? It's a something. Uh, the wrinkles of Ryzen are being sorted out. I mean, it's been a year and you'd expect this to be working through. So the sight of that Sniper X is actually very encouraging. And 95 watt TDP, just like the previous 1600X. Now that business of Precision Boost 2 and Extended Frequency Range or XFR2, basically that means dynamic clock speed. That's what that really boils down to. Provided the CPU is within its thermal envelope, forget the exact number 95 watts because that's just an indication. Uh, that means a fairly toasty desktop processor without being enormously toasty. Then provided it's got enough juice, it's cool enough, then the speed, if the processor wants to go faster, can go faster. If on the other hand it's all getting a bit hot and getting a bit close to uncomfortable, parts of it will slow down. It's a hugely dynamic thing. Uh, the speed's changing 25 megahertz bumps uh, up and down like crazy. The fact that this is a nominal maximum boost of uh, 4.3, uh, 4.2 gigahertz, that was not all the cause. That's going to be like when you start running a, a benchmark or something, you'll, you'll suddenly see the clock speeds flash up and then drop back down as more cores chime in. It's the all core speed that we're really interested in. Uh, the test system that we have here, so we've got uh, a Gigabyte X470 Aorus Gaming 7 Wi-Fi motherboard, uh, X470 rather than 370, that significant new chipset. 
and if you want your new uh, second gen Ryzen processor to work correctly with uh, the dynamic speed um, increases, then you require the 470 chipset. 370, 470, Intel's done similar things to us in the, well, recently actually, with Coffee Lake, uh, Z270 going to Z370. You look at it again, but in what way is it different? Uh, the layout and the construction of the current crop of motherboards definitely seem a, a notch above the previous. Why they have to have a different chipset and call it something different, that remains to be seen. But it is still socket AM4. So pin compatible, you can take a previous, uh, uh, an original rise and drop it in this motherboard. You can take this rise and drop it in an original motherboard and it will work, provided the buyer supports it. Uh, but you won't get all the features of the dynamic overclocking. Uh, so we've got the Ryzen 5 2600X, we've got 16 gigabytes of the Sniper X from G-Skill, that's 3400 as I say, an EVGA a GTX 1080 Ti graphics card, there's a story there, do you have a benchmarking for this sort of launch? Uh, the twin of this graphics card failed on me, but it took a little while to fail, so all I knew was something was wrong, and I assumed it's part of, you know, I was testing the CPUs and the motherboards and the memory. I assumed something like that was unhappy. The graphics card's barely doing any work in CPU testing. The idea it died on me was just extraordinary. Um, the testing was actually done not with the air cooler. It was done with, I'll reach across. Testing was done with this Fractal Design Celsius S24, which is an Ace Tech 240 mil. And the reason I used it is because it uh, has interchangeable mounts. These uh, mounting plates snap on and snap off. Uh, and it fits just everything that I work with. It's absolute, It's a good cooler and the mounting system is excellent. Uh, there are plenty of liquid coolers on the market that do not support AM4 Ryzen. So if you want a liquid cooler, just make sure it actually supports your uh, chosen platform. And the reason I'm even mentioning liquid coolers is because that cooler there, it certainly works adequately when you uh, stop clock speeds. If you want to go for extra performance, really a best off changing cooler and frankly I find the fan noise a little bit annoying sitting here it's dead silent but as soon as it starts to work you can hear it getting faster and getting noisier whereas the liquid cooler it's just basically silent or it can be if you let it to its own devices uh, so the AM4 socket that's a good thing but we've got a second generation of motherboards that's annoying on the plus side pricing is really good uh, so as I said before this uh, CPU package sells for £210 to £9.99 including the cooler so you can argue that the uh, processor itself is under £200 uh, the original first gen 1600X that sold for £250 uh, but it gets better than that because if you look around now uh, that uh, that Ryzen 5 1600X that was £250 at launch, you can now find for £175. That Ryzen, uh, Ryzen 5 1600X, that's a good processor. Uh, we liked it when it came out, it's still good. This is better, but it's a marginal improvement. Uh, and this takes us to the business about what is different inside the processor. The die shrink from 14 nanometer to 12 nanometer. Uh, it really is as it sounds. You're basically looking at 10% in area. You'd think everything gets 10% close together, uh, which is worth having, but the, the processor has not been redesigned internally, uh, and that means you are looking at uh, some gains, about 5% we reckon on performance, uh, because everything's that bit smaller and close together, uh, and also presumably AMD's had the extra year to refine the designer tad, or people, people at the Silicon Fab have at any rate. Uh, and in addition, you've got this precision boost to an XFR2, which certainly helped. This is where things get slightly amusing. AMD is positioning the Ryzen 7 2700X, the new king of the heat, the 8-core 16-thread, directly against the Intel Core i7 uh, 8700K Coffee Lake. That's the 6-core and 12-thread processor. Uh, Intel has better IPC than AMD, so uh, AMD's kind of got more cores, and overall what they're saying is, in terms of gaming, we're equal. When it comes to content, uh, so video editing, that sort of thing, we're better because we've got more hardware cores. And they're not wrong, um, is, is the truth of it. You can certainly make the case that 2700X is better than Coffee Lake, or if you're a dedicated gamer who does nothing but games, you could say, no, Coffee Lake works for me. Uh, you can argue it both which ways. Curiously, <laughs> AMD's positioning this Ryzen 5 2600X against Core i5 8600K, which is a six core processor that costs £219, so you know, they're in the same ballpark in terms of pricing, but it's a six core six thread, it doesn't have hyper threading. 
uh, this is six core 12 thread. Now, this is slightly slower in terms of clock speed than the uh, Intel processor. And in fact, you can overclock the Intel processor to five gigahertz if you really want. I mean, it gets close to the, the limits of the package, but it will go all the way to five gigahertz. This will go to 4.2 gigahertz. And frankly, there's no point in doing it. The, the return on the overclocking was essentially zero. Uh, so I would strongly recommend if you're buying this processor, buy it, just run it as it comes out of the box. Let that dynamic overclocking work for you. Do not bother manually overclocking it. Total waste of time in my recent experience. To compare this Ryzen 5 2600X with the Coffee Lake Core i5, uh, technically on paper, that there's just it's just not right. Uh, on the other hand, if you're looking at the price point, which processor do I buy for about £200? Well, you can very easily make the case that this is the processor to get. But then we had this argument a year ago. It was, well, Core i5 is dead. Buy yourself a Ryzen 5. Next, move on. Why are we even having this conversation? There was nothing to discuss. And the fact is that quite clearly people are continuing to buy Intel. They're not ditched Intel in favour of AMD. Therefore, you've still got the argument to have. So this is a darn fine processor that runs basically at four gigahertz out of the box. It's got six cores, it's got 12 threads. Uh, it's reasonable value for money. No, it's good value for money. It's good value for money. Uh, I'm not mad keen on the cooler, but it works. And you know, you can always replace it with a better thing that's quieter. That's really the thing for me. Um, and gaming performance, uh, content creation and such like, they're all good, they really are. The real pain in the neck is that it's not enough to buy the £200 processor, you also have to buy yourself a £200 motherboard. So you really, you're gonna have to look at spending about £400. Uh, that's quite a lot of cash to lay out. But then we've had this so many times, each new generation comes along and there we go. So if you currently have a Ryzen first gen, I can't believe you're gonna buy this and the motherboard. I, I just find that hard to believe. But if you do, I think you'll be pleased. If you don't yet have a Ryzen, but you've been considering a Ryzen, this is definitely where you should be leaping in now. 200 for the motherboard, 200 for the processor, job done, bish bosh wallop. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from Kit Guru, click to subscribe. Do hit the bell button if you want to be alerted to new videos as they become available. I'm Leo Wooder for Kit Guru. This is AMD Ryzen 5 2600X.